In the heart of the city, nestled between abandoned warehouses, lay the Last Supper, a fading restaurant under the reign of an unassuming figure, Chef Orville. Known for his peculiar recipes and insatiable gastronomic creativity, Orville was a culinary virtuoso, but beneath the veneer of his culinary charm lurked a diabolical secret. He was a mass murderer, using his restaurant as a hunting ground for his victims. On a cold, dreary night, James, a heartbroken man, found his way to the Last Supper. He was nursing the sting of rejection, stood up by his date, seeking solace in a warm meal. He was unaware of the ghastly fate awaiting him. Inside, the restaurant exuded an eerie calm. Flickering candles cast ominous shadows on the worn-out walls, while a solitary gramophone played a haunting tune. A shiver coursed down James's spine, but he dismissed it as the bitter wind howling outside. Orville, noting James's arrival, saw an opportunity. His eyes, cold as the steel of his butcher's knife, glinted with sadistic anticipation. He invited James to a secluded table, ensuring his privacy, then retreated to his kitchen to prepare a special dish for his unsuspecting guest. The Sleeping Beauty was Orville's sinister masterpiece. It was a sumptuous dish, a blend of exotic meats and aromatic spices, laced with a potent tasteless drug. The drug was designed to induce a deep slumber, allowing Orville to transport his victims to the restaurant's chilling underbelly unnoticed. As James consumed the Sleeping Beauty, the drug coursed through his veins. His eyelids grew heavy, his senses dulled, and before he could raise an alarm, he slipped into unconsciousness. Orville, watching from the shadows, moved swiftly. With practiced ease, he hoisted the unconscious James onto a trolley and wheeled him into the kitchen. From there, a concealed door led to a sinister chamber, a freezer that served as Orville's grotesque trophy room. Inside the freezer, victims were stored like slabs of meat, their frozen eyes reflecting the monstrous reality of Orville's restaurant. James, now a part of this horrifying collection, was left to freeze, his final breaths fading into the icy silence. Orville, pleased with his new acquisition, returned to the kitchen. His mind danced with macabre ideas, each more horrifying than the last. After a few hours, he returned to the freezer, James's life now a mere echo in the icy chamber. Using his culinary skills, Orville began his grotesque task. He meticulously carved up James's body, his hands steady, his face impassive. The meat was then marinated, cooked, and served to the restaurant's unsuspecting patrons, who savored their meals, blissfully ignorant of the grim reality. The Last Supper continued its macabre service, its gruesome secret hidden behind the facade of a humble eatery. Orville, the psychopathic chef, his dark desires satiated, waited for his next victim, the innocent patrons unknowingly dining on the echoes of lost souls. In this chilling narrative, a simple dinner became a trap. A restaurant turned into a slaughterhouse, and a lonely man found himself entwined in a deadly dance of horror, his final resting place the cold, merciless belly of the Last Supper. In the heart of the city's labyrinthine alleys, nestled behind a nondescript facade, lay Chez Noir. Its darkened windows, veiled by aging crimson curtains, hid secrets that the uninitiated would find revolting. It was an exclusive, reservation-only establishment, frequented by those seeking a peculiar dining experience. The owner, gastronome Sebastian Voss, was an enigmatic figure. A culinary virtuoso, his talent was as beguiling as his origins were obscure. His eyes, dark voids, held a chilling emptiness that seemed to devour any trace of human warmth. His silent demeanor was punctuated only by his passion for the art of cuisine. Inside Chez Noir, dimmed lanterns threw long, monstrous shadows, dancing eerily on the cobblestone walls. Antiquated portraits adorned the room, their hollow eyes watching over the patrons who dined in hushed whispers. The air was filled with a symphony of aromas, sweet, pungent, and curiously metallic. Chef Voss's menu was an enigma. Dishes, named in an ancient language, were presented with little more than a cryptic description. Clients were left to the mercy of their taste buds, each bite a surprise of texture and flavor. Unbeknownst to them, they partook in a ghoulish feast of human flesh, artfully prepared and disguised as exotic meats. One such dish, Carnum Noctis, was a macabre masterpiece. It featured what appeared to be tenderloin, but was in fact human muscle, meticulously marinated in a blend of rare spices, aged for days in the chilling bowels of Chez Noir. 
It was seared to perfection, the heat caramelizing the surface into a crisp crust, hiding the raw horror beneath. The Vena Dulcis, dessert of the damned, was a spectacle. Voss would meticulously drain human blood, reduce it with sugar and spices, and spin it into a delicate crimson cotton candy. It was served atop a slice of rich, velvety cake, made from ground bone meal and human fat, its grotesque origins masked by the overpowering sweetness. Every night, a fresh supply was ensured by a network of illicit organ traders, grave robbers, and corrupt morticians. The inky underbelly of the city served as Voss's butcher shop, providing him with the morbid ingredients for his culinary atrocities. One day, a young unsuspecting journalist, Althea, got a reservation at Chez Noir, aiming to write a piece on the restaurant's unique appeal. She dined on the Carnum Noctis, savoring the complex flavors, unaware of the ghastly reality. The Vina Dulcis, however, unsettled her. Its metallic aftertaste stirred a feeling of dread deep within her. With a newfound suspicion, Althea began investigating Chez Noir. She discovered a series of unmarked deliveries, traced them back to their grim origins, and realized the horrific truth. The revelation was a vile twist, a jolt to her sanity. Fear and disgust churned in her stomach, threatening to bubble over. Althea vowed to expose the monstrous banquet. However, Voss, ever watchful, perceived her probing. His dark eyes narrowed, a predatory glint sparked within them. The game was now afoot. As Althea penned her expose, she was unaware of the malignant force she had disturbed, the silent hunter who now had her in his crosshairs. In the labyrinthine city, the horror of Chez Noir lurked, a chilling secret waiting to be served. Althea, working feverishly, began to compile her findings. Her apartment was littered with photographs, maps, and stacks of paper, a testament to the sprawling horror she had uncovered. But as the tendrils of the monstrous truth spread across her floor, so did the shadow of Chef Voss creep ever closer. In the seclusion of Chez Noir, Voss plotted. His culinary craft, an art of deception, would now become a tool of menace. He knew he needed to act swiftly, to silence the meddling journalist before his grotesque secret was brought to light. In the darkened city streets, Althea was followed. Ghoulish figures, loyal to Voss, traced her steps, disappearing into the shadows whenever she dared to glance behind. Her every move was watched, every conversation overheard. Fear seeped into her life, staining her every waking moment with paranoia. Meanwhile, at Chez Noir, Voss prepared a special dish for Althea, Silentium Eternum. In the eerie glow of his kitchen, he crafted a dish designed to muffle the truth. The main ingredient was a lethal blend of exotic plants, known only to a few, capable of inducing a deep, eternal sleep. Althea, sensing her time was running out, decided to publish her expose. She worked through the night, her heart pounding in rhythm with the frantic tapping of her fingers on the keyboard. Just as the first light of dawn broke through her window, she hit publish. The truth about Chez Noir was now out in the open. Simultaneously, Voss, his dish prepared, dispatched one of his underlings to deliver a complimentary meal to Althea. The package was left at her doorstep, an innocent-looking box tied with a red ribbon. Althea, exhausted from her all-nighter, found the package. She eyed it warily, her instincts on high alert. Choosing caution over curiosity, she decided to take the package to the police, hoping to lend credibility to her story. At the police station, the Silentium Eternum was inspected and the deadly ingredients identified. The truth of Althea's expose was confirmed, leading to a raid on Chez Noir. The restaurant was found deserted, save for the chilling remnants of Voss's heinous cuisine. Voss, however, was nowhere to be found. He had slipped away, disappearing into the city's labyrinthine alleys, his chilling secret exposed, but his fate unknown. In the aftermath, Althea's expose sent ripples of horror throughout the city. Chez Noir's patrons, once the city's elite, now found themselves reviled and shunned, their taste for the macabre laid bare. The city was left to grapple with the ghastly reality of Chez Noir, a chilling testament to humanity's capacity for horror. In the city's underbelly, whispers told of a new restaurant, hidden away like Chez Noir. Rumors of a menu similar to Voss's spread, igniting fear and disgust. The specter of Chef Sebastian Voss loomed over the city, his whereabouts unknown, his legacy a gruesome tale of culinary horror.